On September 12, 2020, an A318 flying from Biarritz to Paris Orly is on approach for ILS 25. The weather conditions are cavalcade with a slight wind and the ground temperature is 23 degrees. The crew are experienced on the aircraft in their respective positions and are very familiar with Orly Airport. No specific threats for the approach are identified. The captain, who is PF, feels rather confident and tells the co-pilot he would like to push his limits a bit and perform a fast approach. Given the low traffic situation that day, the controller offers a shortcut to which the crew agree. At their request, the crew are vectored to a base leg. AP-1 is engaged, the airplane is in open descent with engines at idle, speed is selected at 250 knots. The crew asked the controller for a further turn to the localizer and are cleared for ILS 25. The approach mode is armed and AP2 is engaged. The lock star mode engages, the airplane is above the glide slope. The airplane is still one knot above the glide slope. 3,000 feet, the selected altitude is captured and engines pull up to maintain the selected speed. APs are disengaged, the crew set a higher altitude and a negative vertical speed in order to capture the glide slope from above. The airplane is still in clean configuration with a selected speed of 250 knots. The speed is managed, engines pull down and both APs are re-engaged. The PF's objective is now to reduce speed to extend the landing gear and flaps. The speed brakes are extended. The PF reverses to manual control to pitch up and reduce speed. The landing gear is extended. Just below VFE, flaps are extended to configuration 1. The vertical speed drops to 2,800 feet per minute. The GPWS glide slope alert sounds and due to the triggering of the MSOR on his scope, the controller asks the crew to monitor their altitude. At 1000 feet, the airplane is in configuration 1, the indicated airspeed is 204 knots, VAPP plus 78. Configuration 2 and 3 are set. At 500 feet AAL, the speed is VAPP plus 26 and the engines that are idle. Although the airplane is not stabilized, the crew continue the approach. Five. 
hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. The APP is reached yeah. just before touchdown and the landing is uneventful. What are the key points of the approach? At 2,000 feet, the airplane was on the ILS in clean configuration at 250 knots. At 1,000 feet, the airplane was in the landing gear down flaps 1 configuration, 78 knots above the target approach speed. At that point, stabilization at 500 feet was already compromised. At 500 feet, the airplane was fully configured 26 knots above the target approach speed and engines were idle. The approach was not stabilized. The crew knew the approach was not stabilized, but they were both convinced they could perform a safe landing, which explains why they actually continued. Although the landing itself happened uneventfully, the investigation showed that during the final stage of the approach, the captain was actually looking outside, not monitoring the instruments, and the co-pilot was overwhelmed by the rapid changes of configuration, ATCX changes, and having to call out for landing checklist. The crew had little or no resources left to deal with any unexpected event. What was the impact of the crew's decision on the safety margin? Overall, line operation safety audits conducted by LOSA Collaborative indicate that approximately 4% of approaches are not stabilized, mainly due to crew actions, such as handling issues and deviations from the SOPs. So do pilots really go around if the approach is not stabilized? The answer is definitely no. 97% of unstabilized approaches are continued until landing, 90% of landings following unstabilized approaches are uneventful. However, in 10% of cases, the situation goes wrong, resulting in long, short offset or hard landings. More importantly, the studies indicate that after unstabilized approaches, whatever the crew's decision, land or go around, the level of risk is significantly higher than after a stable approach. Therefore, yes, undoubtedly, safety margins are reduced. Regarding flight data monitoring, the report shows that numbers underestimate unstabilized approaches. Why? In part because the stabilization height depends on weather conditions, which are not recorded. The investigation also revealed that deviations upstream of stabilization heights at key gates of the approach profile, for example, were not systematically measured. Hence, flight data monitoring can not always play its role in accurately feeding training programs such as the evidence-based training. Multiple factors contributed to this event. The decision to perform a fast approach outside the standard profile described in the SOPs, the lack of deviation callouts by the pilot monitoring, final vector resulting in the interception of the glide slope from above, lack of practice during the last six months due to the pandemic. Finally, the crew not being fully aware of the risk resulting from unstabilized approaches. Following this report, the BA made two recommendations. The first one to the operator, to ensure that the automatic detection criteria of unstabilized approaches, notably before stabilization height, are close to the reference system described in the standard operating procedures. The second one to the French Civil Aviation Safety Directorate, to ensure that the operator's flight data monitoring system 
is more relevant in the detection of the cruise deviation from the standard operating procedures. So pilots, what should you remember from this event? First, SOPs and approach are very effective tools to calibrate energy, achieve stabilization at target altitude, and preserve mental resources to deal with unexpected events near the ground. Second, if the approach is not stable, Although going around remains obviously the best option, the risk level has already increased whatever you decide, land or go around. Therefore, compliance with SOPs from the very early stage of the approach is definitely the safest course of action.